From the streaming company that brought us such hits as He's All That comes a new movie that's definitely not cashing in on the name alone called Mother of the Bride. It's not often I go out of my way to run into a burning building, but in some instances I just can't resist looking at the piece of crap in front of me and giving you my thoughts. And make no mistake, Mother of the Bride is uncut sheer garbage in its purest form. Let's talk about it. This is going to be a spoiler review, so if you don't want things ruined, <laughs> I mean, don't watch the movie then, otherwise you'll have an hour and a half ruined of your life. Brooke Shields and Miranda Cosgrove star in this, I guess we're calling it a movie, that whisks us away to a magical paradise with wealthy people doing rich people things, getting into hijinks, and we're expected to somehow relate to any of this and find something to laugh about. Well, I'm not laughing. I'm actually yelling internally because this is the kind of garbage that's getting green lit now and actually made into feature length productions. That's depressing. There's so much talent out there that's not being utilized. But yeah, we got to do Mother of the Bride because there is absolutely not a single soul on planet Earth that thought, you know what? I'd love to see a, I'd love to see a swap of this concept from the 1991 original with Steve Martin. If you want to watch a decent family drama with some good comedy, watch Father the Bride 1 and 2. Those movies had heart, they had some actual production value, they had some care taken with the script. This thing does none of it. This is the type of movie grandma puts on in the background, or maybe your mom while she plays Candy Crush or some game on her phone. She walks around chatting with Blanche down the street on the phone for 45 minutes, keeps the movie running. Doesn't matter if she actually saw it or not because the plot is so paper thin stupid. Really, not, none of, nothing's at stake here at the end of the day. Miranda Cosgrove's character Emma's getting married and she didn't tell her mom. Why? Kind of undetermined. Supposedly, Brooke Shields' character Lana is a bit controlling. She's very hard-nosed. She's tough to deal with. But that's not what we see at all in the movie. Actually, Lana's very easygoing for the most part. She's very receptive to the fact that her daughter has been secretly dating a man for a long time and got engaged and set the wedding in a lavish resort one month from the day she told her mom about it. L listen, as a parent myself, I'd be a little perturbed. I'd be a little bothered that my daughter's been keeping this whole life from me. That That's crappy. But Brooke Shields' character is just kind of like, well, uh, I'm a little annoyed, but I'm going to be the cool mom and understandable. And yeah, let's go do this. What? What, what? what world are we in now? Lana does really nothing wrong throughout the entire movie. And Emma's just kind of a bitch about it. She gets mad at her about the smallest of things. Because what's happening right now is Emma's getting this trip paid for because she's an influencer. She's garnered a lot of viewers online, on Instagram, and she's leveraged that into a deal with Discovery, becoming their brand ambassador. And when you're a brand ambassador, they, they fly you out to a, a lavish resort where they're gonna pay for your wedding, pay for your flights, pay for your rooms and everything. We, we never actually see her post anything on her social media. We never see any of the views or what she's actually doing for them. But you know, it doesn't matter because nothing in this movie matters at all. And contrary to what Father of the Bride was about, which was the father-daughter relationship, this is not at all about the mother-daughter relationship. That, that takes a backseat to what really is happening in this movie, which is Lana's relationship with an old fling she had in college. Emma's getting married to this mystery man named RJ, and RJ's dad actually went out with Emma's mom back in whenever it was. They were very hot and heavy, and it kind of just ended abruptly. Lana's been holding on to that pain, that resentment for a very long time, and after the death of her husband, she's got nothing left. She's got nothing left but baggage. So really, this movie's about Lana and Will rekindling their old flame, sowing those oats, so to speak. And it's going to be awkward if they end up together, because then technically, her daughter Emma is going to be marrying her brother. Kind of uncomfortable, a little weird to think about, but this movie's not going to dwell on anything. It's so superficial and so stupid, it can't be bothered. Here are the jokes in the movie. Are you ready for this? We have a scene where Emma falls backwards into a koi pond. That, that's one. That's one of, I think, three. Another time she hits Will in the nuts with a pickleball during the lamest battle of pickleball I've ever seen in my life. Pickleball's already a very lame sport, which I love. I play it with my family. We have a great time. But it's, it, I mean, it's a pretty lame sport. It, old people play it every day at gym. That's what they do. You, you see an 85-year-old geriatric dude, he's out there on the court. 
tapping that ball over the net back and forth. And that's kind of what it looks like is happening during this, I guess we'll call it an action sequence. <laughs> it's really awful. But yeah, Lana's gonna hit Will in the nuts accidentally with the pickleball because they're having this very heated back and forth match. And that's gonna cue Emma to hear about this somehow almost instantaneous where she's like, what are you doing, mom? You're ruining everything. I hate you. It was an accidental hit in the nuts. Why is that even a big thing that's getting reported on? And this just keeps happening throughout the movie. Emma's getting furious at her mom for doing these pretty tame things. You fell in a pond accidentally? Why are you ruining my life? I knew I shouldn't have invited you on this secret wedding. Early 90s heartthrob Chad Michael Murray's in this. I haven't seen him since the early 90s. Uh, he still looks fantastic. He's got that beach blonde hair, uh, longer now. He has the pick of the litter. He could go for pretty much any woman he wants. So naturally he sets his eyes on 58 year old Brooke Shields. Are you out of your mind? Listen, Shields has always been easy on the eyes. That was kind of what she was known for at a very uncomfortably young age. An, an age that should throw a lot of people in jail, but they're not. So here she is again, a cougar on the town looking for a fresh meal and Chad Michael Murray has found it. He, he's got his eyes on that prize. Why? No reason, no real reason at all, other than to have some love triangle conflict between her and her old fling. Supporting actors include her best friend Janice, played by Rachel Harris, who I also haven't seen in quite a while. I always liked Rachel Harris. She's a good comedian. She's funny in a lot of roles, not here. She's truly trying her damnness to make anything fun, but it's just not working, Rachel. I'm sorry, you picked a really horrible movie to be in. And I think you know it. I think at the end of the day, they all know it. And since this is a Netflix movie in 2024, we do have, of course, the obligatory gay couple. They're gonna come and go make gay comments as they do, because that's the entire identity of people in movies. Gay people are just like, I'm gay, this is my thing. This is, I have nothing else to offer this film other than that. And uh, yeah, that, that's really kind of how it is all around. Everybody is just surface level stupid. They have little dumb jokes here and there, but nothing lands at all. If you've seen a movie before, then you've seen what's in this. And because this is the most bottom of the barrel chat GPT AI script ever generated ever, we are gonna of course end this movie with a wedding dance that's gonna lead right through the credits where everybody, all the actors in the film that got to go on their couple months long trip to make this pile of shit, they have a little dance number, tip the hat, wink, get their name in the credits, cash their checks and go on their way. Never thinking about this movie for even a second. Let's talk about the pro. There's only one, it's short. That's it, that's the pro. If you turn this on, it'll be over before you know it. But you shouldn't watch this. You shouldn't put this on. You shouldn't have this playing in the background because even in the background, this film is useless. It's the equivalent of just having a potted plant on your TV screen for an hour and a half. There are people online that get offended when you say negative things about a movie without like sugarcoating it or giving a positive, but I don't like these types of movies. I think they are bottom of the barrel trash. This is the way for Netflix to just get content out there. They had a property, Father of the Bride, or, or they were able to, I guess, leverage that title for some reason, change it, and then use the same kind of format, except for they didn't even do that. This is so lazy, so half ass it's not even half-assed, it's third-assed that I can't foresee a single person, any age, any walk of life, going, watching this movie and saying, oh, what a fun time. I can't wait to rewatch Mother of the Bride. No, no one should like this movie, and I don't think anyone really does. The only person that's gonna say, oh yeah, I watched Mother of the Bride, it was okay, it was all right, is the mom in her 50s or 60s who is seriously not really watching it. She's baking something in the kitchen. She's got family on their way. Uh, one of the sons stopped by and she chatted for 25 minutes while it was still playing in the background. That's the type of audience this film is made for and no one else. Last and maybe least, there's only really one song in the movie and it's the generic wedding song everybody walks down the aisle to. The version they have is played with, I think, a broken ukulele. <laughs> it's so bad. And they play it like three times in the course of 10 minutes. Ding, 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 ding. In summary, this movie's shit. 
Thanks for watching my review of Mother of the Bride. If you got something out of it, please like the video. Subscribe as I post tons of movie reviews, rants, roasts, and just honest reactions and opinions to movies coming out all the time. Would love to have you on the channel. If you really like what I'm doing, I have a brand new second channel, Adam Does Rants, where, you guessed it, I'm ranting about pretty silly first world problems like people on their phones in public without headphones in, McDonald's pretending to have ice cream but never actually having ice cream because the machine's quote unquote broken, things like that, just very fun, silly stuff. Hopefully I see you at both locations, and hopefully I see you next time. Take care. Ding, 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 bum, 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 bing 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 bing